let's just start. No, you start right there. We're all thinking of where, who's going to start, who's going to press the button. I'm not even concerned. I'm just thankful that we have the opportunity to connect with you guys today. Thank you, love. Thank you so much. I might need you later. Um, I just wanted to take time out today to thank everybody for tuning in to Truth Be Told. This wasn't created to like, you know, galvanize millions of people. Because remember, if we're talking about anything that's true and that's relevant to you, not many people might want to hear it and not many people may tune in. So what's been great is that there has been a couple that make comments. There's been people that understand what it is I'm talking about. And that makes me feel great because I know I'm not the only one out there that sees like how malefic the world is becoming by the day. And if we don't take time to slow down and to uh, break out of the monotony, we can get caught up in it. And um, I just, I don't want to right now. I think it's really a time to slow down and to be thankful for moments like this where true communication can exist, even if I don't have a team and all of this and all of that. What I wanted to talk about today was the power of an apology. Um, on my last show, I was talking, um, I think I gave a couple stories, and I wanted to tie up, and I like to continue, by really thinking about the power of an apology. And um, I don't have a problem in calling people and getting and saying, look, I'm sorry for doing X, Y, and Z. But apologizing is way bigger than saying I'm sorry. It's actually humbling yourself and having courage enough to connect with the person's energy that you feel you violated and um, oftentimes today we're just too busy to think of who we need to apologize to for whatever um, and and no one's too big for it I definitely want to apologize to my sister I have personally but I also want to apologize to you publicly by saying I'm sorry that I didn't know um, in being happy with someone would negate your own personal happiness and in choosing to have more than a relationship with just you it would come off like I was violating you or leaving you for him I'm sorry if I never had the chance to tell you that I'm truly sorry for making you feel as though I should have chose you when really as my sister I just wanted you to be in my life unconditionally um, and the same thing a lot of people don't take time to just pick up the phone and apologize to someone that they've wronged. And it's really important. We're in a, a time of retrograde right now. And people are always scared of communicating through retrogrades, but retrogrades are great for correction. If you don't like what Rihanna wears, don't watch it. If you don't like what people say, don't tune in. If you don't appreciate the fact that, yes, it's horrible to be buck naked, but she does it pretty well. And she's not uncomfortable with this. And she ain't the only one. And she ain't the only one. You know how so, many naked chicks on Facebook? So let's stop pointing out Rihanna as such a dot when really everybody all that. everybody wants to sleep with the They dot. all that. But, but my thing is that if she's that, everybody's that. Because everybody go through the same hazing in and, the industry. And how, and how would Jay-Z give advice to her, Rihanna, about how to dress when Beyonce didn't win any fashion awards? No. Like, let's keep it real. Beyonce does not do anything she is not told to say and or do. That's just what she is. Period. And then, like I said, to the point where they done, these Negroes are created, instead of them trying to get their moral science or, or trying to get a nationality, even figure out what a bay really is, they done, these Negroes, Christian Negroes, done created a church of bay. They use an Islamic term. They use a Moorish Islamic term, the church of bay, to worship this thought, right? To worship her to the point where they said that some said chick, that. some chick, that. <laughs> some chick, then killed herself, murdered herself in the name of this person. Now, do you think this person will go on TV and make a statement? You're not supposed to be worshiping me. We all supposed to be all individual. We, no, she's not going to do that because she never want niggas say, to you do know, that. I'm tired of people talking about my daughter's hair. We're choosing nope. to, we're choosing to grow it. They do need to grease it at times, but you notice that wealthy people never take care of their own stuff. Nope. They always pay for somebody else to do it. That's right. Sometimes, the other day, we were walking in the dreadful rain. It was pouring. We were with our son. We got caught in the rain, and it was raining so hard. Yep. And we're walking in the rain in the street. And I told us here, you know, sometimes I think we're put in situations like this, not because we did anything wrong or hard, for other people that are driving to see that it's still possible 
for our family to coexist and not be arguing right. in the rain. Right. We were happy. Yeah. I was like smiling. I was thinking of things I needed to release. Yep. All of that. That's all we can do. Um, being more open to the notion that people are coming to me to help me and not just take from me. Um, I have a lot of trust issues that I know exist and I I've been breathing them through. I'm doing my best to let them go. But if you've been through what I've been through, I mean, people literally thinking of ways to get to to to, to have me have a miscarriage. People in my life that have said to me, "Oh, well, I told people you smoke too much weed as a means to try to get you to not think that you could have a healthy baby." Like people are just foul sometimes, you know, and. They don't mean to be. Sometimes it's their spirit that wants you to feel as as downtrodden as they might feel. And um, one thing that I know when I connected with Asir is that it wasn't the right time or thing to do. And that's actually what made me be like, nah, this father, this man with kids, this person is being so, so punished for loving his children. And it broke my heart that someone that was willing to bring groceries to, to their kids didn't have the support and didn't feel as though anyone wanted to celebrate him doing what any father should do. You know, mothers can make it hard, man. Us women, if you are not happy with your man, your baby daddy, we can do so much to cause division, to, to cause confusion with our children. Um, God forbid I mention a serious, a serious you know, given circumstances with his children because I didn't have babies with him at that time. He had babies with two other women, so it's like, God forbid, another woman outside of that have an opinion yep. and see what's going on. But what happened to him, I'm sure, has happened to so many black men and so many fathers. And I say black men because I don't see it happening to Russian, Italian, <laughs> Chinese, Jap Japanese. I really don't see it happening like that. And Yesterday on Father's Day, I really, I couldn't even post anything on Facebook because I was so sad to know that his own mother doesn't call. And I knew this. This is what I knew before I got involved. But you know, sometimes women get involved in relationships to try to bring healing and clarity. And my energy actually did the exact opposite. It made his mother not want to support him at all. It made his baby mamas not want to share, have the kids around. When we worked together, his baby moms relied on me to take her to the hospital. She didn't no, have did. she didn't have any problems asking to live with us. No. You know, I did so much in being like, do you know the nature of our relationship? Are you aware that I'm not just a roommate? Oh, I don't need to know that. Just, you know, tell him I need some of that sperm for a second baby. This is what she did. If you don't like somebody, you don't ask them for sperm for an impregnation. You don't do that type of shit. So I remember slowing down, it's like I'm jumping, but the point is I'm trying to share a story and saying that his baby moms was great friends with me before he said to her, look, I don't want to live with you anymore. I don't want to, I don't want to artificially inseminate you. I don't want to have anything to do with you except raising our daughter. I thought that was a little harsh, but I didn't know the nature of their relationship beforehand. So, you know, I'm like, let her live with us. It's okay. He's like, <laughs> nah, are you crazy? Nah, nah, nah. And I'm like, but why? That's your baby mom. She just that's, wanted to be that's king. Why. That's He's why. like, not only that, I've been in situations with her where she'll befriend an enemy just to get under my skin. You know how y'all do. And rather than get into it, I was so sad on Father's Day because as much as my father has done to hurt me and to be an abusive energy in my life, now that my mother has passed, he's tried so hard to remix. to remix and to get that time to almost not exist, if, if that makes any sense. He loves my son enough to try to deal with me, but my father has done so much that I had to forgive him for. Because if I didn't forgive him, I wouldn't be able to be happy in the present moment. I wouldn't be able to have a son that looks like my father and love him unconditionally. I, I would have carried all that with me. So to look at how many women are still in pain with this No Father's Day campaign. Like, wow, that was really self-hating. Like, 
That was so self-hating. But it shows you that we're, women are not... They bought it. Not only did they buy it, we're beings that don't know how to let go of pain. And that's something that I can say separates me from other women. Because I don't want to hold on to it. It's going to age me. It's going to drive me insane. It's going to cause other ailments in my body like breast cancer to develop. I, if I can be in control of anything, it's my thoughts. And I've really tried and strive to not think negative about people that do negative to me. That's my main meditation. That's why I do yoga. Because it ain't easy. Every day I think of who has hurt me, who has wronged me. And I'll be like, that's not a thought of mine. They did that for whatever reason, but I try not to hold on to it because I know what thoughts can create. Shout outs to Carolyn Miss. I read this book over 10 years ago, Anatomy of the Spirit. I'm okay, thank you, baby. Anatomy of the Spirit as to why, uh, why, why disease occurs and what causes disease to occur. And the first thing is our thought forms, is the way in which we think. The inability to forgive someone for wronging you. You know, someone asked me to um, do, a, do a speaking, you know, to talk about abuse and mental abuse. And I am going to. But with only an hour, I want to give time to all of that. And really right now, there are so many women that are attracted to abuse. And there's so many men that are attracted to abusing women that like abuse. So it's it's a partnered relationship. Like my like my sister, for example. If we were kicked out of our house and asked not to come back, why would you then go back a year from now or two years and think that things would be different? Some people are attracted to their abuse because what the abuser does is they create a space in the abusee that says, don't you want to know why I'm doing this to you? Don't you want to know why I hate you so much to continuously do this? But you got to know that when someone hates on you, it's all the main reason is because they don't love themselves and they're looking for something to control. They're looking for someone's mind that they can have permission to use because if I can't use mine, I don't have freedom in my own mind, then how profitable will it be to have access to someone's mind, to how they think of themselves? That's what pimps do. Pimps actually attract women that are a little bit broken because if they can fill that broken space, now they can be the one that the woman relies on for everything. I'm the type of girl, if I meet you and I know that you cheated on your husband with four different men, I'm not going to say nothing around you and your husband. But now you're going to be uncomfortable as a woman because you know I saw you cheating on your husband with four different men. So it's up to you. Either you want to be around me or you don't. Because eventually it's, it's going to come out. It's going to come out, yeah. And I'm it always, always comes out. And I, I share that story to say forgiveness is here other than them. Because when we moved to Miami, we moved on the opposite side of the bridge. And what I realized is on that side of the bridge is where all the people of color, yep. is where everybody exists that I'm interested in knowing. Yep. But because I'm on this side, where all the Latinos are, it's almost like we've sold out. Right. I'm from Brooklyn. I didn't know the neighborhood breakdown when I moved here. Right. I just moved to where buses were. Right. I moved to where it was comfortable based on me knowing somebody that lived here. And me wanting to live next to the beach. And me wanting to be walking distance to the beach. Mm -hmm. But you know, people... I'm not speeding up what I'm doing, so... Right, and people people see what they want to see is what I'm is what I'm using is what I'm saying. So to a lot of people that live here, I might look like a seller because I live near the water. But I'm not going to take that personally. Number one, number two, you can't. This is a world. This, it, it's so palpable nowadays. Like sometimes I do yoga in a bathing suit just because people aren't used to seeing black women in shape. They don't have a whole bunch of fake ass and fake titties and cellulite. That's why I do it. I know I'm not attractive to all these men that need a C46 inch hips, but what I'm trying to do is reminding young girls and reminding teenagers that they don't have to spend a whole bunch of money to feel good about themselves. That they can wear a bathing suit. How is it that all these Caucasian, Asiatic, exotic women can be in thongs, but when I put one on it, oh God, oh, oh. It's, it's like, it's like, yo, what's the problem is, is that 
we're not used to seeing people of color in their natural habitat no. unless we're either cooning out on Stripping. some Africa loincloth stuff. Stripping. There's Stripping. never any meeting them a balance. Now, one thing I did want to say is that there's so much confusion with the history of the Moors. History is world history. Moorish history is just when you qualify all the history and make it pertain to us. That's what a seer does. That's what his genius is in. And I'm thankful because I have had the blessing of having the cheat sheets, the cheat notes right by my side. And I wanted it by my side. That's what I supported. Because so many people try to act like it's not something that we should invest in. So they, they, they diversify it. They find three other people that don't have as much talent in history to learn this from. But what it's doing is it's causing more confusion and division. So I'm actually thankful because when something is divided, all that can be done is it being brought back together. That's right. Is it being sinuated, it That's coming right. back together, it coalescing. So, you know, we're gonna use that for that. I'm gonna think in a second, but let's continue because we don't okay. have that much thing. That we're so separate from us. Yeah. What do you think are like the five missing things in history that people have forgotten about and don't remember? Who started slavery in America? Who was it started by? Uh, a black man, quote unquote black man. We'll call you him. Come a, in here. We'll call him. I don't care. No, I'm about listening, but right. it's all good. <laughs> it was a black man named Anthony Johnson. He's so pretty. In 1654, he had an indentured servant, another so-called more or black man named. Robert Castor. See? That, Robert Castor. Robert Castor worked off his indenture because at this time, this is before the United States, it's 1654, so there is no United States. So that means the general national government, our government, was running shit here at one point. So at what this was point. Uh the United States of America and General Congress Assembly. Another way of saying that is the Societis Republica. The Alamanicanos Estados, which would translate to uh, the, the Moorish or the Republican Empire of Moorish Estates. Okay, continue. I didn't mean to cut you, but so many people have questions like that. So, long story short... Don't cartwheel, Amor. So, long story short, Anthony Johnson wanted to hold on to Robert Castor, who was the indentured servant, whose indenture had ended after, after a certain time. Robert Castor left. When he left, he went to go work for what was called a free white person. That's what the history books say, a free white person. So that means that this person was a Moor, but naturalized himself into a foreign government. What's so this is three- What's the difference between nationalizing and nationalizing? Do you want to do that right this second? Let me finish the story okay. and then I'll, I'll do Sorry. it back. Anthony Johnson was a good as one, though. in Northampton, Virginia, took was in, exactly. Robert Castor to court to own him to say that he basically violated the indenture that Robert Cass was under him for for however many years to go and work for this other guy Robert Parker Robert Parker and wound up losing excuse me Anthony Johnson wound up winning the suit so what this meant was that Anthony Johnson the more the black man could now own perpetually this other black man named Robert Parker who was working for a so-called another black man, the so-called free white person, Robert Parker, who was working for him after his adventure ended. So what that did was that opened up a portal that then started to make it where that was the first case in American history where one so-called Moorish person or black man could then own another one. Because up until that time, the only people that was being owned was Caucasians and these other people. So in that period, that opened it up and then that created a a vacuum where now other Moors, black people, let's say black Americans now, were forbidden from owning Caucasian people anymore. Wow. See what I'm saying? And then that opened it up now for this whole black on black thing to happen. So then once we lost our position in the national government, we start fighting with each other and then the so-called indentured servant now, who's a so-called quote unquote Caucasian person now, aka white person now, could now move up and then start using that as a means to control and as a means to own his own people right. perpetually. So now that the people who could own people, now these Caucasian wow. people, move up, now they start just owning all the other black people they can because the black people put in laws to say that they can't own no Christian slaves no more. 
Christian slaves are white men. So what they started to do was then indoctrinate these so-called black people, ex ex Moors or whatever, which, wasn't right at all. which is not right. I'm not saying that any of this is right. I'm just saying that karmically, it makes karmically, sense. it makes sense as to why we still got beef with each other today, why we still can't get with each other today. The queen asked, "What's the difference between naturalization and nationalization?" Naturalizing would be like you going to a restaurant and asking to see the menu, right? And then when you look at the menu, you say, okay, I'm full, <laughs> like you ate. Nationalization is actually looking at the menu, ordering the food, paying for the meal, eating, and leaving. So naturalization is when you come into a foreign government and give up everything that you had prior prior to, to that to, to, to this into government the fold of what exists. without Our them even at, without them even securing that they even going to give you nothing and so nationalizing is what nationalizing is when you decide that your national people is the most important people to you more than anybody else and how can that be done where quote unquote in a, in a, in a state of law cuz i can say that i'm you know, tree, Put tree right. falcon L. Right. But on paper, my name is Juliet Lewis. Right. So Put it like this. Puerto Rican people, people from the island of Puerto, so-called Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is, or Puerto Rican is not a nationality because you cannot be a rich port. That's what Puerto Rico means, rich port. So you can't be a national, <laughs> a national person with the designation of rich port. What Puerto Rico is, is a naturalized territory. So that means that they have the right to charge you taxes. They got the right to put an army on your, on your, on your base. They got a right to do certain things to you, but you don't have the right to ask them for nothing. So Puerto Ricans within that, for instance, they can have their own so-called flag, right? Or so-called nationality, but y'all can't vote. You can't vote in the same country that's charging you taxes. Soon as soon as the people from um, Puerto Rico wanted to move the army off their base, off out of VAK. Oh, they blew Remember? up VAK. What they started doing, they started dropping bombs all over that place. So basically they're holding an island for ransom. Over where? You know what I'm saying? Basically they're holding the whole island and everything for ransom. So I'm saying all of that to say, when it comes to your national self and your national character, you want to promote that feeling or that, that aspect of it above everybody else. Because everybody else is doing that to you. You don't never see no Chinese people bigging up Japanese people over them. You don't never see Japanese people bigging up Chinese people over them. The only people in this world you see pe you see bigging other races and other nationalities up other than themselves is so-called black people. Why? Why would they do that? When everybody else in the world is screwing everybody else over to make sure that they people come up. The only people ain't doing that. And it's doing that for everybody else is our people. So what does that mean? So you see why you have a lot of people say, oh, I don't want, I don't like being black. Or I don't like this. I don't like that. Because they don't see no value in it. There really isn't. Like in the sense that when you are black, there's no value in that. And again, you can have a nationality and be from someplace. Thank but you. It's like watching something I think somebody had on the other day. And they were talking about all the, the negative connotations when they were talking about, you know, the black holocaust or black cat yeah. or this or that. Or, Muhammad you know, Ali. Muhammad Ali. That's who I was watching. Muhammad was, Ali. Thank you, sweetheart. And it was a great interview when he was like, everything white is great and everything black is not. And then, you know, when you are this skin color, they, you know, society even tries to make it like, yep. we're always depressed, we're always angry. crying, we're angry, like, I've none of us can get along. I've watched you, I've watched Selena been in situations where she has almost had to, had to not even tone down how she talked, she only be talking inflammatory, angry like that, but because she talked, She's direct. a dark-skinned woman, and because she can speak on her voice, and because she is direct, and also she happens to be a woman who knows what she's talking about, people automatically start taking that as a challenge. Nice, son. Nice save. You it's come okay. in, please. Are you kidding? Nice save. You know what I'm saying? We're doing this on the tennis court. So we're about to close it up. Because it's the only place where their light is, and we only have four minutes. But that's what I'm trying to say. Like, nobody wants anybody 
knows what they talk about to really do it, unless they white. Because when I see these Caucasian people on TV, and when I saw all these other people on TV, whatever, they seem to say and do what the fuck they want to do. And nobody say nothing. The minute that we start to stand on our own voice, and what I tell, and what I be talking to the queen about is real. Nobody wants the so-called American-born blacks to have their own individual identity, nationality, birthright, and inheritance. They don't want you to do it. They want you to always be dependent on somebody else because they're making billions of dollars of dollars off of your ignorance in the form of chattel paper, birth certificates, mortgage-based securities, mortgage-backed securities, uh, uh, dividends, uh, stipends, and, and it's just so much confusion. And the thing is, half of us don't even know that that's where our money goes. So know. many people don't even know even that know. there's there's like actual wealth behind your title, behind your name. Right your now. Brand. Right now. Like my name, a little more than others because my people, what they did, was a little bit more grimy back in the day. I'm not saying all of it was great. You know, the Cordobas, they did a lot, but maybe some of it was kind of grimy. And so karmically, you know, they did a lot to our family now to try to divide and dissent. Like, I think about that all the time. But more than that, these are, this is why we have to try to create certain forums. And again, ain't nobody helping me with the camera nope. to film him. And when they did, they tried to use it to make money and to cause confusion when it could have brought people together quicker. So this is taking long because the same people that I tried to to um, marry my energy with actually were probably divisive back in the day mm -hmm. like before we incarnated in this form that's right so you know i'll see them and i see a similarity but the similarity in the physical was only to get us to try to make amends now yep. and i all i can do is try but i can't apologize to somebody when i haven't wronged them well how about we instead of us using the word try let's use the word let's substitute that word for the word strive, strive. Because to try it's means tonight, it's not going to happen. You're, right. you're either going to do it or you're not. But striving... Means that you always working to do it. And that's what we got to do. Like, if me and the queen don't get up and do what we need to do, it's not going to get done. And that's the same thing. Striving to understand why people, like some of his students, um, are smart enough to start teaching. But Thank God. they don't even, some of them, I had a funny conversation with one sister the other day. And she was like, yo, I didn't think that I could ask to work with him because it's a seer. I was like, queen, you've known us personally for over six years. Like, of course you can. You're smart enough to, you can open up for him. That's what we've been looking to try to pass this energy along other people because God knows if I stand on a podium and start talking law, oh, she in competition with her man. You see, she trying to, it's not for me to do. I have my lane. I have my lane and I know what I'm good at. So I'm not going to try to remember dates, names, and people and facts about history when I attracted someone that I respected and knows that. Just like I am not going to go out there and start telling people how they need to stretch and how they need to do their downward facing dog and all of that because or how to actually cook a certain meal or whatever because unlike a lot of people or maybe like a lot of people grew up with a single mother uh, my mother never taught me how to cook my mother I never and then because of that there was a certain laziness as a man where I never even took the initiative to figure it out other than basic basic shit so I'm not going to get on here and act like a master chef. And I've told him that. This, and this just and like that. he's told me certain things like, yo, let me help you. Um, it's very difficult when I'm in a routine to, to ask for help because I was raised by someone who taught me to do for myself. And my father, as, as horrible as he was in many ways, he was like, my family didn't help me with nothing, so get used to it and do for yourself. Yeah. I've, I've wanted to break down and cry and be like, but you can help me. Yeah. He don't want to. Yeah. So what that caused me to do was cry and figure out a way to get it done myself. That's right. I know how to change my own oil, change a tire. I don't want to know how to do these things. I want a man to know how to do these things. But I attracted someone who was a New Yorker, who doesn't drive, who didn't learn those things, maybe because his family didn't want to empower him by teaching him. Yes, it's his responsibility now, but I also can't act like I didn't know 
that he couldn't drive when I got with him. Right. So I can't be upset about these things. All I can do is try to teach him how to drive and try to help him get there. Try to teach him how to cook for himself. And if not, cook because I enjoy it. Um, but, you know, it's like... Everybody got their lane. Yes. So I'm not going to step in your lane and you're not going to step in my lane. We're going to merge lanes when they need to be merged. And, and celebrate each other's And talents. parallel them when they need to be parallel. But by no means am I going to look... It's not like when you're driving down the street, you see the two yellow lines in the street. It's not like this yellow line on the right is hating on the one on the left. They just they, all function they, together. They just go together. The same thing in the animal kingdom. Words. Things just function naturally. The same thing thinking about... Um, uh, the, the jokes with Rihanna's dress. You know why I like Rihanna? Because Rihanna does and wears what she wants. We know she, when she wants. We already know what she stands for. I, I can say all this for Babylon, that for this. But rather than talk like that, everybody loves how fake society is becoming. How much they can buy, you know, buy their bodies instead of work for it. We don't live in a time where you work for anything anymore. Word. So as much as I want to encourage people to do so, I might sound crazy for people that know they can just go out and buy it. The same thing. Uh, anybody that gives Beyonce a run for her money, I support. Because Beyonce does so many things to be cool and then to be a hater. If you love your sister, then don't always chastise crop her out. and crop her out. If you're a supporter, then support. Don't just make it be about foot in her face or her arm in her face. It's because Beyonce don't believe her own daughter is gorgeous. That's why she don't sport her like a Birkin bag. I'm going to keep it really real. And that's sad because the way it works, if you believe your, ch your child can grow to be beautiful, it can be gorgeous. If you believe that you can't have a baby with good hair, your baby's gonna come out with horrible hair to test you. If you don't believe that you can have something unconditionally love you, then you're not. If you don't believe that your daughter is gorgeous, then you're gonna put her in positions in pictures to look hidden. I don't care how public you are. such beautiful hair, but because they don't believe in locks, in locking or braiding their hair, it's just going wild. It's going crazy. And now people are showing other pictures of their children with wild hair stuff. You think Beyonce really care to look at your daughter or your child and go, oh wow, everybody knows I'm keeping it real. She don't do that. Nope. Just like as much people defend Jay-Z as being an amazing businessman. We know he's not. He don't care about us. Jay-Z don't care about nobody but his own pockets. And I'm not trying to be like grimy. Like any rich person. This is anyone. I think some wealthy people you're right. A lot of rich people <laughs> we don't care about other people's they finances. Care. They care about their finances. You're right. Uh -huh. And nobody, and not to cut your wisdom. You'd never cut my wisdom. But nobody should 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 be looking at this as like like dialogue with our people. I know this is very very. Uh, it's either either we telling jokes or we dissing somebody. Like we don't have no just straight dialogue. But we actually are communicating how we feel about any given topic without one being too, so personally offended that we never speak again or it's so cooning out or so we gotta coon out so much or Thank be you. so aware of offending Thank like you. as a, a, a as a woman who when you are something you don't always have to constantly announce what you are i'm not gonna come on here i'm a more i'm a more i'm a more well, you're preaching to the choir right why you always got to prove what you are right. every time you meet a catholic they're not like Hi, good I'm afternoon. Catholic. I'm Catholic, by the way. Word. Oh, good afternoon. I'm Christian, and I'm of the Methodist faith. Are you Lutheran, or are you Baptist? Right. That's crazy. So for people to think that I should use my forum that I created yep. as a means to just Islam, peace, Islam, I kind of think, think that that sounds crazy to people that don't understand what the true function of Islam is, is designed for. That's why we have temple meetings and all that for that. And that's for temple meetings. I don't need to use this when I'm actually trying to galvanize people that might not have ever heard of consciousness, Word. might not have ever heard of the term melanin. Those are the people that are of interest to me because those that know already know. I might be boring to you. Yeah. What isn't boring is people that forgot that they can be more than what they've been told or what they've been taught. That is the purpose of why I'm also doing what I'm doing. Not to coax and to masturbate with people that understand what Islam is. You know, I self-law and master. Yes, we know this, but so many people 
don't understand what that is. And if I come on the camera on some Islam, it can also negate and detract people that are new to this. So, you know, don't let anybody make you feel like if you're not doing this, this, and that, that you're not real. It's like, I can tell someone that they're not real at whatever. That's just an opinion or a point that I'm trying to make. And it's ridiculous. How much are you going to take on of someone else's opinion to deter or distract you from who you are? Exactly. It's ridiculous nowadays. Exactly. Like, I, I'm, so, I'm so sorry that there is so much that has worked through slavery. Willie Lynchism worked. Because so, I, long story short. Don't cartwheel, Lamar. So, long story short, Anthony Johnson wanted to hold on to Robert Castor, who was the indentured servant, whose indenture had ended after, after a certain time. Robert Castor left. When he left, he went to go work for what was called a free white person. That's what the history books say, a free white person. So that means that this person was a Moor, but naturalized himself in Northampton, Virginia. Took Robert Castor to court to own him, to say that he basically violated the indenture that Robert Cass was under him for, for however many years, to go and work for this other guy, Robert Parker. Robert Parker and wound up losing, excuse me, Anthony Johnson wound up winning the suit. So what this meant was that Anthony Johnson, the more, the black man, could now own perpetually this other black man named Robert Parker, who was working for a so-called another black man, the so-called free white person, Robert Parker, who was working for him after his adventure ended. So what that did was that opened up a portal that then started to make it where that was the first case in American history where one so-called Moorish person or black man could then own another one. Because up until that time, the only people that was being owned was Caucasians and these other people. So in that period, that opened it up and then that created a, a vacuum where now other Moors black people, let's say black Americans now, were forbidden from owning Caucasian people anymore. Wow. See what I'm saying? And then that opened it up now for this whole black on black thing to happen. So then once we lost our position in the national government, we start fighting with each other and then the so-called indentured servant now, who's a so-called quote unquote Caucasian person now, aka white person now, could now move up and then start using that as a means to control and as a means to own his own people right. perpetually. So now that the people who could own people, now these Caucasian wow. people, move up, now they start just owning all the other black people they can because the black people put in laws to say that they can't own no Christian slaves no more. Wow. Christian slave is a white man. Wow. So what they started to do was then indoctrinate these so-called black people, ex ex moors or whatever. Which wasn't right at all. Which is not right. I'm not saying that any of this is right. I'm just saying that. Karmically. Makes Karmically, sense. it makes sense as to why we still got beef with each other today. Why we still can't get with each other today. The Queen asked, what's the difference between naturalization and nationalization? Naturalizing would be like you going to a restaurant and asking to see the menu, right? And then when you look at the menu, you say, okay, I'm full. <laughs> like you ate. Nationalization is actually looking at the menu, ordering the food, paying for the meal, eating, and leaving. So naturalization is when you come into a foreign government and give up everything that you had prior prior to, to that to, to, to this government the fold of what without them even without them even securing that they even gonna give you nothing. And so nationalizing is what? Nationalizing is when you decide that your national people is the most important people to you more than anybody else. And how can that be done where, quote unquote, in a, in a, in a state of law? Because I can say that I'm, you know, Tree, Tree Falcon L, but on paper, my name is Juliet Lewis. Right. So, put it like this. Puerto Rican people, people from the island of Puerto, so-called Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is, or Puerto Rican, is not a nationality because you cannot be a rich port. That's what Puerto Rico means, rich port. So you can't be a national, <laughs> a national person with the designation of rich port. What Puerto Rico is, is a naturalized territory. So that means that they have the right to charge you taxes. They got the right 
to put an army on your on your on your base. They got a right to do certain things to you, but you don't have the right to ask them for nothing. So Puerto Ricans within that, for instance, they can have their own so-called flag, right? Or so-called nationality, but y'all can't vote. You can't vote in the same country that's charging you taxes. Soon as soon as the people from um Puerto Rico wanted to move the army off their base, off out of VAK. Oh, they blew Remember? up VAK. What they started doing, they started dropping bombs all over that place. So basically they're holding an island for ransom. You know what I'm saying? Basically they're holding the whole island and everything for ransom. So I'm saying all of that to say, when it comes to your national self and your national character, you want to promote that feeling or that, that aspect of it above everybody else. Because everybody else is doing that to you. You don't never see no Chinese people bigging up Japanese people over them. You don't never see Japanese people bigging up Chinese people over them. The only people in this world you see pe you see bigging other races and other nationalities up other than themselves is so-called black people. Why? Why would they do that? When everybody else in the world is screwing everybody else over to make sure that they people come up. The only people ain't doing that. And it's doing that for everybody else is our people. So what does that mean? So you see why you have a lot of people say, oh, I don't, want, I don't like being black. Or I don't like this. I don't like that. Because they don't see no value in it. There really isn't. Like in the sense that when you are black, there's no value in that. And again, you can have a nationality and be from some place. Thank you. It's like watching something I think somebody had on the other day. And they were talking about all the, the negative connotations when they were talking about, you know, the black holocaust or black cat yeah. or this or that. Or, Muhammad you know, Ali. Muhammad Ali. That's who I was watching. Muhammad was, Ali. Thank you, sweetheart. And it was a great interview when he was like, everything white is great and everything black is not. And then, you know, when you are this skin color, they, you know, society even tries to make it like, yep. we're always depressed, we're always angry. crying, we're angry, like, I watched, none of us can get along. I've watched you, I've watched Selena been in situations where she has almost had to, had to not even tone down how she talked, but she only be talking inflammatory, angry like that, but because she talked, She's a dark skinned woman, and because she can speak on her voice, and because she is direct, and also she happens to be a woman who knows what she's talking about, people automatically start taking that as a challenge. Nice, son. Nice save. You come okay. in, please. Are you kidding? Nice save. You know what I'm saying? We're doing this on the tennis court. So we're about to close it up. Because where their light is, and we only have Indeed. four minutes. But that's what I'm trying to say. Like, nobody wants anybody knows what they talk about to really do it unless they white because when I see these Caucasian people on TV and when I saw all these other people on TV whatever they seem to say and do what the fuck they want to do and nobody say nothing the minute that we start to stand on our own voice and what I tell and what I be talking to the queen about is real nobody wants the so-called American born blacks to have their own individual identity, nationality, birthright, and inheritance. Go to they Africa. don't want you Go to, to do Africa. it. They it want you to exist. always be dependent on somebody else because they're making billions of dollars of dollars off of your ignorance in the form of chattel paper, birth certificates, mortgage-based securities, mortgage-backed securities, uh uh dividends, uh, stipends, and, and... It's just so much confusion. And the thing is, half of us don't even know that that's where our money goes. So know. many people don't even know even that know. there's, there's like, actual wealth behind your title, behind your name. Right your now. Name. Right now. Like, my name, a little more than others, because my people, what they did, were a little bit more grimy back in the day. I'm not saying all of it was great. You know, the Cordobas, they did a lot, but... Maybe some of it was kind of grimy. And so karmically, you know, they did a lot to our family now to try to divide and dissent. Like, I think about that all the time. But more than that, these are this is why we have to try to create certain forums. And again, ain't nobody helping me with the camera nope. to film him. And when they did, they tried to use it to make money and to cause confusion when it could have brought people together quicker. So this is taking long because the same people that I tried to to uh, marry my energy with actually were probably divisive back in the day mm -hmm. like before we incarnated in this form that's right so 
you know, I see them and I see a similarity, but the similarity in the physical was only to get us to try to make amends now. Yep. And I, all I can do is try, but I can't apologize to somebody when I haven't wronged them. Well, how about we, instead of us using the word try, let's use the word, let's substitute that word for the word strive. strive. Because to try it's means it's not going to happen. happen. You're, right. you're either going to do it or you're not. But striving means that you always working to do it. And that's what we got to do. Like, if me and the queen don't get up and do what we need to do, it's not going to get done. And that's the same thing. Striving to understand why people, like some of his students, um, are smart enough to start teaching. But Thank God. they don't even, some of them, I had a funny conversation with one sister the other day. And she was like, yo, I didn't think that I could ask to work with him because it's a seer. I was like, queen, you've known us personally for over six years. Like, of course you can. You're smart enough to, you can open up for him. That's what we've been looking to try to pass this energy along other people because God knows if I stand on a podium and start talking law, oh, she in competition with her man. You see, she trying to, it's not for me to do. I have my lane. I have my lane and I know what I'm good at. So I'm not going to try to remember dates, names, and people and facts about history when I attracted someone that I respected and knows that. Just like I am not going to go out there and start telling people how they need to stretch and how they need to do the downward facing dog and all of that because or how to actually cook a certain meal or whatever because unlike a lot of people or maybe like a lot of people I grew up with a single mother. Uh, my mother never taught me how to cook. My mother, I never, and then because of that, there was a certain laziness as a man where I never even took the initiative to figure it out other than basic, basic shit. So I'm not going to get on here and act like a master chef. And I've told him that. This, and this just and that. Like he's told me certain things like, yo, let me help you. Um, it's very difficult when I'm in a routine to, to ask for help because I was raised by someone who taught me to do for myself. And my father, as, as horrible as he was in many ways, he was like, my family didn't help me with nothing, so get used to it and do for yourself. Yeah. I've, I've wanted to break down and cry and be like, but you can't help me. Yeah. He don't want to. Yeah. So what that caused me to do was cry and figure out a way to get it done myself. That's right. I know how to change my own oil, change a tire. I don't want to know how to do these things. Right. I want a man to know how to do these things. Right. But I attracted someone who was a New Yorker, who doesn't drive, who didn't learn those things, maybe because his family didn't want to empower him by teaching him. Yes, it's his responsibility now, but I also can't act like I didn't know that he couldn't drive when I got with him. Right. So I can't be upset about these things. All I can do is try to teach him how to drive and try to help him get there. Try to teach him how to cook for himself, and if not, cook because I enjoy it. Um, but, you know, it's like... Everybody got their lane. Yes. So I'm not going to step in your lane and you're not going to step in my lane. We're going to merge lanes when they need to be merged. And, and celebrate keep the, each other's And talents. parallel them when they need to be parallel. But by no means am I going to look... It's not like when you're driving down the street, you see the two yellow lines in the street. It's not like this yellow line on the right is hating on the one on the left. They just all they, function they, together. They just go together. Same thing in the animal kingdom. Words. Things just function naturally. The same thing thinking about... Um, uh, the, the jokes with Rihanna's dress. You know why I like Rihanna? Because Rihanna does and wears what she wants. We know she, when she wants. We already know what she stands for. I, I can say, oh, this for Babylon, that for this. But rather than talk like that, everybody loved how fake society is becoming. How much they can buy, you know, buy their bodies instead of work for it. We don't live in a time where you work for anything anymore. Word. So as much as I want to encourage people to do so, I might sound crazy for people that know they can just go out and buy it. The same thing. Uh, anybody that gives Beyonce a run for her money, I support. Because Beyonce does so many things to be cool and then to be a hater. If you love your sister, then don't always chastise crop her out. and crop her out. If you're a supporter, then support. Don't just make it be about trying to make it you know, worldly, attract more people, put Nas in it. But people that's great. People ain't never come to election. That's people ain't great. never bought a DVD. People ain't never actually stood up and went out and did anything other than rock a mic or go on a tour. But that's, These are the but niggas that's, that's they going to teach you about more people love. That's what people listen to. I know. That's what people are attracted to. The same thing. I was telling a friend that we're going to have a speaking engagement here. And you know what I realized? A lot of people, even though they don't tell me this, 
they sometimes don't want me around him. I haven't, true? I've never negated, deterred, thing. I like being around him because it's my family. I try to help us here so he's not doing so much in selling DVDs and yeah. filming okay. the event and di distracting. That, that's what I feel my job has been part of, partially. But I'm also not going to say that I am not aware that that might come off like a cock blocking energy to those that just want free reign. I don't even know what that is. Like what I am aware of though now and what I will say to the people is if he does a lecture in North Carolina or someplace and I'm not there, it's not because I don't want to be. It's partially because I'm aware that my energy to the people is intimidating enough to know that it stops women from flirting, it stops people from feeling like they have free access, and that's not good. Because I might, my presence, even though I'm not aware, it might be negating other people's comfort. Let me tell you something. If somebody want to we tell me something, and somebody can't tell me something in front of this person, then I don't need to be hearing it no way. Keep it real with you. And then maybe because I don't, I don't think for myself, like there was room with these niggas, New York was putting out rumors about how she had me under mind control and I don't think for myself and this, this, and that. Anytime thing is, a man is my, with a woman and he allows her to speak, I think that that's going to be the general hum. Yes. Is that he's under mind control, she's a, domi she's a dominatrix. If you knew a seer, I can't dominate you. him to, Let me tell you to watch, to do nothing. Let me tell you something. When it really comes down to it, a man going to do what he going to do regardless. But the reason why...